if you're not organized, it's as if you're not there at all. Right. Well, how do you think you organize us? Because there's a handful that will organize. Uh -huh. Then there's the crowd that will organize and mm -hmm. won't vote. How do you feel about that? Well, here's the thing. Voting is important, but only if we want to organize. Okay. I am not a fan of people just going out to vote because it's time to vote. That's well, pure I'm nonsense. Definitely not that either. Uh, that, 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 that is a uh, agenda that the black bourgeoisie in the Democratic Party Plantation Slave Committee created. You totally know, they, 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 they use yeah. fear. Totally. They use fear to force people out to vote. We're the only people in the country who vote out of fear. Right. Everybody else votes out of concession, out right. of demand, out of need, out of resource. Black people vote out of fear. Right. So if he's an Asian, he's going to vote because something's coming to the Asian community. Right. He's an East Indian, he's going to vote because something comes to the Indian community. He belongs to a labor organization or professional association. Right. He's going to vote because something's coming to his organization. That's right. I'm black. I'm not getting nothing. That's nothing right. that they're getting is coming to me. Right. I'm purely voting mm. because the black bourgeoisie of the Democratic Party has told me, if you don't, mm. things will get worse. Look That's at right. the difference now. Oh, yeah. Everybody else is voting to gain. Yeah. We're voting to prevent someone else from getting into office, which means the person we're voting for has no obligation to us at all because we're not voting for him to do anything. Right. We're voting for him to keep the other guy out. Now, yeah. how, do you, how do you fix or stop that? Well, number one, I think black people have to get off both plantations. Okay. Get off the Democratic Party plantation right. and the Republican Party mm -hmm. plantation. Mm -hmm. We should build our own independent black political union and then leverage our voting numbers to make demands on either major party, right? right. There's never going to be a black president unless they want one. Right. And I don't want another black president right. because truth be told, the reason we're in the situation we're in is because we gave Barack Obama eight years to do whatever the hell he wanted to do to black people. Okay. Most of the problems we're suffering from right now, the Jackson water crisis, all of it, you can trace it back to a neglect of Obama that black people co-signed. Mm -hmm. So I don't even blame Obama. We co-signed it. Mm -hmm. No other president in American history did we sit back and let do whatever the hell they want mm -hmm. and ask them not to do nothing. Now let me ask you this. You, you, you make mention of the Democratic Party like mm -hmm. that. Uh, what are your thoughts about this Republican Party? Well, both of them are demons. Okay. Well, both of them I mean, are demons. I'm, I'm, I'm just... I'm no, no, no. Know where that, you're going no. With it. That's so, why I said yeah, earlier, yeah. we need to start our own black political union yeah, right. or our own black political party. The most honorable Marcus Garvey in his days in New York City, he started the Black People's Political Union. Right. Because I'm of the opinion, you don't necessarily need a party. Now, in Jackson, you can have a party because you're in the majority. Right. Wherever we're in the majority, do the party because you can win. Right. Right? right. If you're not in the majority, do the union so you can influence whoever does win. Okay. okay. As long as Democrats know they get our vote no matter what. As long as Republicans know they don't no matter what will never be taken seriously by either candidate that's right. it's like walking into a supermarket and paying for yeah. groceries that you haven't even taken off the shelf yet that's exactly what we do every election right. look at President Joe Biden President Joe Biden one year before the election said that the number one civil rights issue in America was transgender equality he tweeted this one year before he got elected Black people didn't say nothing. We voted him in the office. What was the first thing he did when he took office? He passed the transgender equality I, bill. I think I think that happened because everybody was sick of Trump, okay? And right. they were just like, but nah, that's our problem. Says, you but know? that's our problem yeah, yeah. because we reduce the machine of racism to individuals. Right. Racism is not an individual. Donald Trump is not racism. He is a racist, but he is not the system. Mm -hmm. What they have done to black people's political demise, if they have brainwashed us and convinced us that racism is a individual personality disorder. It is not. Racism is a group system developed by white people to disenfranchise all black people mm -hmm. so they can control resources opportunities and privileges all white people are racist mm -hmm. everyone yeah, everyone because everyone right. there's no white so person who's not a racist let me finish this point because i want to make sure you understand this when I say all white people are racist, that doesn't mean that they're all bigots. Right. There's a difference between being a racist and a bigot. Okay. A bigot, I hate you because you're African. Okay. A bigot, I want to kill you if I can. A bigot, you're the N-word to me. A bigot is emotionally committed to your destruction because you are black. Mm -hmm. The racist is committed to control of the resources and opportunities and privileges that you need in order to survive. In other words, I can like black people and still be a racist right. because my racism is not about hating you. It's not about something being wrong with Africa. It's not about your inferiority. My racism is about one thing, 
keeping white people in charge. Yeah. And this is why black people don't understand racism. We think white people gotta hate you to be a racist. No, they don't. Mm -hmm. They simply have to be invested in what? The disproportionality, the inequality, the racism, the discrimination, keeping the resources in white hands. That's all racism is about. It has nothing to do with personal relationships. And this is why when black men lay down with white women or black women lay down with white men, your mate is still a racist. That's sex. Mm -hmm. That's a family. Mm -hmm. That has nothing to do with their obligation to keep white people in charge. Gotcha. Now, I say all the time that um, Mississippi government is just pure racist. It always it is. has been. Right. And they really snuck this bill through mm -hmm. before anybody could do anything mm -hmm. about it. And then it just pops up out of nowhere. And now they want to change everything. And the bill got passed. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about this? As far as you, the Mississippi You're absolutely goes, right mm -hmm. in what you're saying. But again... I'm not going to single them out because they're all racist. Mm -hmm. Right. You, you understand? So racism is a fact of reality for African people. Mm -hmm. This country and the whole world is run by power politics. Right. So the question black Jackson and black Mississippi has to ask itself, how do we develop our power politically and economically and socially so we can push back against some of these things? Because if you don't own nothing, if you don't control nothing, if you don't even have your numbers together so you can force your agenda, you're going to always be the victim of everybody else's agenda. Right. So the question becomes comes what are we doing wrong that we cannot influence what they do that's the question and to that point I would argue that we as black people have gotten so complacent and comfortable with the toys of white society mm -hmm. that most of us are okay being on the bottom as long as we can watch the Super Bowl and get on TikTok mm -hmm. you understand mm -hmm. so racism has created this little box mm -hmm. of existence for black people that we are comfortable in I always say the big difference between black people and white people white people are in the pursuit of power black people are in the pursuit of money yeah mm. Because, wow. like, there are few black people in the legislature. Mm -hmm. And anything I feel like they get, they put out or try to vote on is going to get turned down anyway because yeah. they're outnumbered. Yeah, and there's another reason for that, too. Number one, it's because they're black mm -hmm. and they're outnumbered, as you said. Mm -hmm. Number two, they're all married to the Democratic Party. That's number two. You understand? So so let, let us be honest. Let us make sure we frame the argument correctly. Hold on. Let me finish this. It's not just about they're against us because we're black. That's number one. Hands down. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, you belong to the enemy gang. Mm -hmm. You belong. So you're not just coming here fighting for black people. Right. You're coming here fighting for the Democratic Party of Mississippi's mm -hmm. agenda mm -hmm. in the name of black people. Do you see that? Right. So if I already got a big fight on my hands, I already got a big fight on my hands being black. Mm -hmm. Why am I going to add the Democratic Party of Mississippi's agenda on my back too? In other words, your fight is not even a pure fight right. because you claim you're fighting for black people, but right. you're actually fighting for the white Mississippians' right. democratic agenda. Drop the democratic agenda and make it an all-black fight. So yeah. where do we start with that? Like yeah. getting the people all on one accord or what are some of the tools or tactics we can do to exercise that, to get black people on one accord, to get off of the plantations, like mm -hmm. you said, you know, out of being Democrat, because that's all all they know. You exactly, know that's all they know. We've been voting Democrat for almost 100 so, years. And, 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 and you're absolutely right. And I always tend to go back and ask black people, do you even know why you're Democrat? Or even white people, why are you Republican? And they mm -hmm. can never really give me a solid answer. Right. Mm -hmm. And wh what do you think that is? Why do you think that is, in your personal opinion? Well, one of the biggest reasons that you have so many white people who are Republican over Democrat is because during the civil rights era, OK, the Democrats were painted as the party of the blacks, although we know Lyndon Baines Johnson, John F. Kennedy couldn't give a damn about black folks. They waited to the very last minute to send troops in the Little Rock and everywhere else. You understand? Yeah. So it was never about caring about black people, but they end up getting forced into it because once America started playing international police around the world, they had to clean up their image. And right. part of cleaning up that image is making white people accept black people through desegregation. Mm -hmm. So in the Democrats being effectively painted by the Republicans as the party of black people, after Lyndon Baines Johnson left office, okay, Nixon, Ford, nearly every president thereafter, except Jimmy Carter, who was a Southern Georgia Democrat, everybody else was a Republican up until Clinton. Right. You understand me? Mm -hmm. So there was a national white backlash against the civil rights era. They wouldn't elect another Northern, or should I say, they wouldn't elect another Democrat after Carter until Clinton. Yeah. So yeah. most of your yeah. presidents post-civil rights have been what? Right. Republican yeah. on purpose because white people see Democrats as a party of blacks, even though it's not. The right. problem is we also see them as the party of yeah. blacks and right. they're not. Democrats like are very clever because yeah. what they do right. is they manipulate Republican racism against blacks 
to the benefit of the Democratic Party. So, for example, let's take the George Floyd police bill. Still hasn't been passed, right? Yeah. No. When the Democrats had a majority in Congress, it still didn't get passed. Nope. Mm -hmm. When the Democrats were in charge, it still didn't get passed. You know why? They didn't want the George Floyd bill any more than the Republicans. But what they did was they do what? They wait until the Republicans have a majority, then they bring it up for a vote. Okay. So now when it doesn't pass, the Republicans kept the George Floyd bill. So but, yeah. except, but what about when you was in the majority? Right. Why didn't it come to the floor when you had a chance to pass it? Because you didn't want it either. So what the Democrats do is they stifle anything that benefits black people while they're in charge. And they wait till the Republicans come out and then they enter it when they know it's not going to pass. Yeah, That's yeah. how they control us. Yeah. We are literally under a two-party dictatorship. Black people suffer from the illusion of inclusion. Yeah. And that's what keeps us loyal to the Democratic Party or the Republican Party. Get off of both of them. Right. No white racist Republican Party is ever going to free blacks. How do you how do you start this this situation that you're talking about? Start organize. Okay, I understand that. But how do you organize in a city like Jackson, Mississippi? Because we gonna door to door the same way we did it seventy five years ago. You know what I'm saying? Like then fight them. Right. That's the black saying, bourgeoisie. Have, right, They're right, the gatekeepers. No right. And what you also yeah. got to understand too. Mm -hmm is in a state like Mississippi, the Democrats are only two stones throw away from being Republicans themselves. Right. That means your black Democrats have relationships with white Democrats who have agendas that are antithetical to black people's progress. And also your black Democrats have relationships with white Republicans that are antithetical to black people's progress. So we have to understand that behind closed doors, although it looks like a war in public, there's deals being made between black Democrats and white Republicans behind your back that keep us where we are. Okay. That's the history of black politics post King. Right. So you have to do an investigation in all black elected officials right. from the top to the bottom right. and find out who's financing the campaign. Because right. until you know who's financing people's campaigns, you don't know whose agenda they're carrying out. Yeah. I don't believe in he's black, she's black. I don't play that. That's right. Show me the list of your campaign contributors and I'll know whether you're black or okay. not. Okay, all right, all right. So you mentioned earlier about black people really just searching for money. Do yes, you think we're in pursuit of money. there's a reason that we can't join together, especially in a state like Mississippi where everybody's pretty much poor and they get an opportunity to come along and maybe backstab a situation that they might have been doing some good work in, but mm -hmm. some money comes along and it changes everything. There's an elder of mine in Philadelphia whose name I'm forgetting. She's a public published author and uh, professor at one of the uni universities in Philly. Retired now. Mm -hmm. She said black people are the only people who don't have a racial ego. Mm -hmm. We don't have a racial ego. Right. We have a Christian ego. We have a yes. Muslim ego. Right, right, right. We got a Democratic ego. We got a Republican ego. We got a gang ego. We got a sorority ego. We got a Masonic ego. We don't have a racial ego. Yeah. So there's nobody who's defending the best interests of the race. Mm -hmm. right. Who's looking out for the best interests of the people? Right. Everybody is sectarian, even when it comes to politics. The mere fact that some of us are Republicans and some of us are Democrats speaks to the fact that we're fighting somebody else's agenda. Mm -hmm. We got a Democratic ego and we're not even white people, right. but we don't have a black ego. Right. So what you're going to have to do is reconstruct the collective consciousness of African people. You're going to have to do that one African at a time. You got to start bringing us together. We got to organize the old way. Forget social media. Okay. You're never going to organize organize black people by using TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. We got to organize the old school way. Door to door, we having a meeting tonight. Coming out, we gonna feed you. You gotta feed black folks so they not gonna talk. <laughs> because we're politically immature. We're politically immature. You also gotta entertain black people or they're not gonna come. We're the only people in the country, if you want us to come out, you either gotta feed us or entertain us or both. White people don't need to be fed. White people don't need to be entertained. But Chinese don't need to be fed. Chinese just, that they but you have resources. to build it. You had resources too, but you dissipated them. We're two trillion dollars, my brother. We spend two trillion on Jordans every day. Right. Four billion on liquor. McDonald's gets a billion. Thirty billion on hair and beauty. We have it, but you have to organize it. Yeah. And the biggest. The biggest resistance to the organization is the self-hatred. Remember, there's no racial ego. Black people have given up on being black a long time ago. Yeah. That's why you got niggas running around talking about some of the Indians and aliens and all this other stuff. Yeah. Nobody wants to be black anymore, you gotcha. see? So you got to rebuild that. That's rebuild that. that and it's going to be hard. This ain't no easy thing. No, that's and, what and it may not even get done in our lifetime. That's what, that's what I was segmenting into. Okay. At times, do you, do you feel like you're by yourself in this? And do you, do you have like opposition coming from your own kind. There's always going to be opposition. Yeah. Right? There's always going to be Do you feel like you're by yourself doing it? Because we see you on all the platforms mm -hmm. and this, that, and other, and I don't know if I can necessarily say I see anybody talking like you. Mm -hmm. But I do know two most dangerous things on the planet is sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity. Mm -hmm. So how do you, how do you... How There's do two you answers to that question. One, I'm not alone Okay. in that 
I have tens of millions of supporters around the world, right? Gotcha. Like, for example, the school we build in Wilmington. Okay. That's the first school in the history of this country that was built exclusively off donations from Africans from every continent. So I get nothing but love. Okay. You understand? Right. I'm probably the first mainstream scholar to have the following of these people hanging up on this wall. Gotcha. Put me in the room with any rapper, more people probably gonna come to me than any rapper. Right. That's the type of love I get, right? All right. So that's the one answer. The other answer is the frontline battle. Yes, because there's not a lot of black people who are willing to take the stands I take, who are willing to show up and show out the way that I do. See, if you look at most conscious people, the so-called conscious community, I call it fake woke, because all they do is do videos, nobody's doing any activism. Okay. One of the biggest differences between the conscious community of today right. and the civil rights era of the 60s is they didn't have the knowledge we have, they didn't have all the degrees, but they had the activism. Stokely was on the streets. Right. H. Rap Brown was on the streets. King Malcolm Mega, they was on the streets. Look at these guys today. Look at your YouTube being yeah. fake walkers. Yep. What activism? You never mentioned Dr. King. Well, King is, I'm a hero. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking at Dr. King's uh, April okay. 3rd. Uh, I've been to the mountaintop speech celebration in Memphis on the 3rd. So sure. shout out sure. to Memphis. I'll be on the 3rd. But the point is, these guys today have all this knowledge. Right. They don't do nothing with it. The whole conscious community has been reduced to a what? To a podcast. Yeah. So unfortunately for me, I get more attention from the white power structure than I deserve. Yeah. See, back in the days of Stokely and King and Malcolm, J. Edgar Hoover had to worry about 20 legitimate groups. Right. He couldn't focus on one. He had 20. Yeah. I got to keep the SCLC. I got to watch the Freedom Riders. I got to watch the Sidious. I got to watch Elijah. I got to watch Garveyites. I got to watch Stokely. You see, yeah. today... You can count on your one hand the people who are sincerely committed to our people, struggling in the streets, who are not being financed by white people. Mm -hmm. I want to add that. Mm -hmm. Because some of you will say, well, I know this guy, this guy, this guy. Show me who ain't getting money from white people. Right. right. You feel me? I can't name one group. Let me take that back. I do know a few. New Black Panther Party, mm -hmm. Fred Hampton Gun Club, there's groups, right? Mm -hmm. The UNIA, the Garvey movement, there's different groups. But frontline grassroots action, politically speaking, you can hardly find anybody who's not being funded by the enemy. And that's another big problem that we have. You're trying to fight for justice using racism's dollars. Right. It'll never happen. Now, one of our producers wants to know about the IEP program for Sure, blankets. sure, special education. Okay, so when we talk about IEP, we're talking about three things in one. Mm -hmm. A learning disability, special education, and IEP. You can't have one without the other two. Okay. If you tell me my son is in special ed, that automatically means he has an IEP, mm -hmm. that automatically means he was diagnosed with a learning disability. Federal special ed law, because special ed is a federal law, a federal program. There's 13 disabilities, right? So there's autism, intellectual disability, emotional disturbance, speech and language impairment, orthopedic impairment, multiple disability, other health impairment, the children who are deaf and blind, the hearing impairment, there's 13. But the ones they use on black kids the most are intellectual disability, mm -hmm. reading and math disability, emotional disturbance, and ADHD yeah. for other health impairment. Uh -huh. Now, what do those four disabilities have in common? They're the four disabilities under special ed that are the most subjective and dependent on people's opinions. Mm -hmm. If you tell me your son got a reading disability, I'm gonna ask you to prove it. You're gonna say, well, he has trouble comprehending. I'm gonna say, how much practice does he get? How good of an instruction does he get? Example, what sir. quality of school does he get? Most black kids in special ed are in special ed for reading disabilities. You know why? Because they not read at home. Mm -hmm. Their right. parents ain't got no damn books in that house. Right. They don't go to the library. And they they on this. This right here is destroying black America. The cell phone. It's destroying black America. Yeah. They're all over social network, all over video games, but you fell in two and three classes. And for the life of me, I'm trying to understand why you got black kids in Mississippi who can't read, can't, but they got a video game system write. in their house. Right. Exactly. So, yes, the system is destroying our kids on purpose. They're using special ed to turn black people into a permanent underclass, but they're doing it with our permission because we have gotten comfortable with mediocrity. Most black people are okay with our children being mediocre. And if anybody disagrees with that, I'll say, show me the black city in America that values academic excellence. I don't see it. All I see is attention paid to money, attention paid to these goofy ass gangster rappers. Us, attention being paid to celebrities and entertainers. We do not value academically excellent children. Because most parents, they'll feel like, you know, well, as long as my child do better than what I did. They have that mentality. And that's, and that's sad. Yeah. Because if you are already sub-zero, right. if he's just negative zero, you consider that progress, <laughs> but he's still drowning. But that's the mentality. But yeah. that's, the mentality. Yeah. that's why when I originally came up with the FDMG concept, I want it to be a residential school. We can't afford that right now, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to be a day school. Okay. But ultimately, we're going to grow to be a residential academy. Okay. Because I don't want to send the kids back to the homes. The homes is where the toxicity is. It right. is. As somebody who's a mobile therapist, I go into a house, I see a white Jesus still. We still got oh, white yeah. Jesus. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No books, video games, cell phones, fake hair, Air Jordans, everything. 
but nothing to promote academic excellence. Mm -hmm. We are failing our children as much as the system, which is why I always say, if it was up to me, I wouldn't diagnose kids, I'd diagnose their parents. Yeah. Right. Wow. He would That's not right. have that reading That's disability right. if they didn't have a parent right. disability. Right. What would you say to the parents that would think like, oh, you want a, a residential school, and you're not taking my baby away. What, what would you say to them? Keep your baby. I'm not here to fight nobody. Right. You understand? If you want, I ain't here to fight nobody, brother. One thing about me, I will not be convincing anybody to send a child yeah. to my school. If you come willingly or not at all. Yeah. Now, what is what is your end game with being here today for free the water, free the land? to raise the consciousness, to motivate black people in Jackson to come together and understand that this only happened because we allowed it to. I don't like the fact that a lot of black people like to deify racism. And what I mean by deify racism is you get black people say the reason why they was able to keep that crap capital district is because God basically gave them the power to do it over us. In other words, we don't like to look at the role we play in the oppression we suffer from. And there's too much deification of oppression. It begins with the black church, obviously, right? And I'm not against Always, Chris, I, the church because I'm a just of AME pastors, that's right? right? That's right. But the situation is we approach our political problems the same way we approach our religious problems. That's right. Everything is viewed through a Christian lens, a Muslim lens, a Jehovah Witness lens. You can't do that. Why? Because the Bible is not a political manual. Right. It's a religious one. Right. The Quran is not a political manual. It's a religious one. Nothing's wrong with it. But you don't go to those books to solve problems created by racism because racism didn't exist the way it does now in the times of Muhammad Ibn Abdullah and Jesus Ben Joseph. So we got to solve these problems using the best Bible of all. And that's the human and intelligence of our active minds, you see. So when we start looking at political problems from a religious lens, we start scapegoating God for our lack of responsibility. Let me say that again. One of the biggest psychological problems in black America, we love to scapegoat God for our lack of responsibility. God must have done that. Let's pray harder. I pray every day. I'm a praying person. I also understand that the God I serve does not work for me. God works through me. And if I don't work for myself, God will never help me. And the problem with black people is we have a learned self-helplessness mindset that makes us think we can't do nothing until God works first. Uh-uh. God is the power that works through you. God don't work for you. There you go. There you go. That's right. Uh, what, is, what do you want to say on this platform to the African-American race as a whole? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The African race. Okay. African-American African. branch of the African okay, the race. African race. Okay. What we are going through is of our own doing. Mm -hmm. We can reverse it if we make up our minds to do it. But you will never do this unless you become economically disciplined. That's our Achilles heel. Black America is the only undisciplined ethnicity in the entire country. We have never, in a post-Dr. King era, weaponized our money for our benefit. Whenever we talk political problems for black people, we will talk voting all day long. But we never talk about organizing our money. Why we can talk all day about voting, but we can never talk about using our money to leverage our political power? Because the average Negro, be he a billionaire or a broke man, isn't interested in committing his money to the liberation of black people. We are financially selfish and we're suffering politically because of now, it. Now, do you think that's an incurable disease? Nothing is incurable. Okay. Nothing is incurable. <laughs> all right, all right. But here's the question. Mm -hmm. Are black people willing to undergo the sacrificial pain yeah. necessary to go from degradation to salvation? That's the question. How much are you willing to suffer? You might be willing to lose your job. Right. You might be willing to lose your house. You might be willing to lose your life. J Money ain't willing to lose anything. <laughs> do, do you follow where I'm coming from? Right. So when we come to the table, we have to stop ex assuming everybody is willing right. to sacrifice it all. Right. Find out what people are willing to sacrifice. If this brother says, listen, Doc, I got a family, and I know the race is more important than my unit, but I just can't stomach my family losing a, head, a roof over our heads mm -hmm. by fighting for Black Jackson. Thank you for being honest, brother. So I know there's certain meetings I'm never inviting you to. Yeah. Right. There's certain pieces of information you never get because you just right. told me you will flip. Right. You will flip right. if the power structure threatens your mortgage. You see? Yeah. But it's okay because he was honest. I know how to use them. The problem with us, we're not honest. We'll walk into the room acting like I'm willing to die when your ass ain't even willing to pay $5 for freedom. Right. Right. You see what I'm saying? So if we know where everybody is, we can plug them in as we need it. You think all white folks is committed to the same level? They all committed to white supremacy, but they all have different levels of commitment. Some are willing to die for white supremacy, others not so much. But because they're honest with each other, they can plug them in where they go. Gotcha. We got to know people's level of loyalty. Gotcha. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Your application for the community organization plan, put a, put a, put a scale on there, one right. to ten. Right. How much are you willing to, to live, to die, to go to jail for this? One, circle, two, 
No answer is wrong. Tell them, no answer is wrong. We just got to know how we can use you. Right. You got some black millionaires in Mississippi, right? They want to help, but they're not willing to lose their comfortable life. Mm -hmm. No problem. You never come into an inner council meeting, mm -hmm. but I need you to do this over here. Mm -hmm. I need you to finance this over here. Even with our black celebrities, what are you willing to do? You follow me? I hope it's more than just finance uh, documentaries on people murdered by police, because that's all the hell they've been doing. Every time somebody get murdered, they finance a documentary. Can somebody please explain to me how much police brutality has slowed down because of documentaries over killed blacks? It's not. Power responds to what? Power. It don't respond to documentaries. It don't respond to votes. It don't respond to marches. It responds to power. Get some. We appreciate it, man. Yes, I wanted you to let everybody know how important it is for people to support black. Mm. For the black dollar to circulate in the black community. Show me a politically devastated people. I'll show you an economically devastated people. Mm -hmm. Show me an economically strong people. I'll show you a politically strong people. Your economic situation and your political crisis, they go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. They the top and the bottom. They the yin and the yang. And unfortunately for us, because we're not economically disciplined enough to use our money to benefit our liberation, mm -hmm. we never talk economics. Think about all the conversations you've seen on TV. The revolt summits, CNBC reports, mm -hmm. black church gatherings. Mm -hmm. We always talk about we need to vote. Mm -hmm. You hear about voting 99% of the conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You never hear about we need to invest our disposable income into creating our own institutions. For example, we love to celebrate Black Wall Street, don't we? Mm -hmm. Tulsa, Oklahoma, 101 yeah. years ago, yeah. bombed to the ground, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We used to celebrate Wilmington, North Carolina. There's a documentary out on the Black Wall Street in Wilmington. Rosewood, Florida, love Charleston, Rosewood. South yeah. Carolina. Mm -hmm. You have Black Wall Streets all over the country. Strong. But check it out. Here's the hypocrisy of black people. Why we keep on worshiping and praising these black Wall Streets of a century ago mm -hmm. where we have failed to create one in this century? Yeah. Right. Do you realize there's not a black city in this country? We're 50 million across 50 states. 50 million across 50 states. You can't show me a single city where we own independently, not white finance or government grants, independently, black school to educate the people, mm -hmm. black hospital to save the people, Black supermarket to feed the people, mm -hmm. black bank to invest in the people. Yeah. How is it possible? We are a $2 trillion people, the richest Africans in the world. We are the 10th most powerful economy on earth. Black America alone. Mm -hmm. You ain't got a single black Wall Street to call yours. Mm -hmm. Wow. Chinese can come five years. They got one. one. Arabs can come five years. They got one. Why you ain't got one? It ain't exclusively due to racism, it's due to the economic selfishness of black people. We are not yet ready to put our money where our mouth is. Okay. All right, man, we definitely appreciate you. As I said, I'm related to Frederick Douglass. I'm a kin, not a descendant. Okay. His first cousin is my four times great grandfather. Okay. okay. My four times great grandfather, Stephen Henry Bailey, his mother, my five times great grandmother, young Betsy, Frederick Douglass's aunt, she was sold into slavery from Maryland to Mississippi. Hmm. My grandfather, Stephen, never heard from her again, hmm. right? right? So she's buried somewhere. So for me, Mississippi is personal. Hmm. And she's one of the few ancestors who was sent from Maryland to Mississippi while she was still a youth. Right. And we never heard from her again. So she's buried wow. somewhere in this soil. Well, you'll find it. I want all your listeners, make sure you uh, uh, donate to the Frederick Douglass Marcus yeah, Garvey Academy. Do that. Yeah. Tax exempt. It's tax exempt. Mm -hmm. Hit your cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Dollar sign FDMG school, hit your PayPal. PayPal.me slash FDMG Academy. PayPal.me slash FDMG Academy. If you want to send a check or money order, make it out to FDMG Academy, P.O. Box 9634 Wilmington, Delaware. 9634 Wilmington, Delaware, 19809. Black parents who have issues with your children, if you need expert consultation from an expert school psychologist, you can reach me by email, drumarjohnson at yahoo.com. You can reach me by website, drumarjohnson.com, or you can reach me by cell phone. Text message only, do not call me because I don't answer numbers I don't recognize. Text message only, 215-989-9858. 215-989-9858. And also, I want to say this. If you want to work at the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy, send me your resume. We are an independent school. Don't worry about being certified because private schools have a separate certification process. Send your resume to fdmgresumes at gmail.com. fdmgresumes at gmail.com. We need math and science and language and social studies, but we also need sisters who could do natural hair to teach our girls. We need men who know gun training, African martial arts, how to build websites, do documentaries. 
how to go hunting, how to go fishing. We're going to make our boys into men, the black men that black women need so we can shut down the snow bunny crisis. 